Prayer the Adventure, a six-step program for the developing the habit of prayer by Bill Fleming. Prayer the Adventure is available on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle editions. Today's lesson is on praise. Now, you may think it's strange that we have to have a lesson on how to praise God, but I want to explain what praise is and the function that it has in the Christian life. Praise is talking to God about who God is and celebrating the, the attributes of God. It's a little different from Thanksgiving, which is also very important, but Thanksgiving is talking about what God has done. Oftentimes when you hear songs of praise, they really confuse the two. They talk about praise of who he is and what he's done. So why do we bother to look at them separately? Why not just look at them the same? Well, the reason that we look at them separately is because praise has a unique function. It draws us out of ourselves. It draws us out of the things that happen to our life and help us to look and see the majesty and awe and wonder of God. It's like looking at a great landscape. The more we look at it, the, more, the less we think of ourselves. So for this week, as we concentrate on worshiping God and celebrating God, I, I don't want you to be praying for things in your specific time of devotions. Instead, I want to be, you to be spending your time focusing on celebrating who God is. And we're going to talk about how to do that through mind, through the body, through the heart, and through the imagination. As we have said before, the number one secret to effective prayer is know who you are talking to. Remember, this is talking to God. Praise is celebrating the nature and attributes of God. In other words, it's rehearsing in our minds the character of the one that we're speaking to. Most biblical prayers begin with praise. Moses, for example, began a prayer, I will sing unto the Lord, for he is highly exalted. David began Psalm 100, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Nehemiah began his famous prayer, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his love with those who love him and obey his commandments. Jesus began the Lord's prayer by saying, Our Father who is in heaven, your name is hallowed. Psalms are full of the praise of God. For example, Psalm 18.3, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Psalm 48.1, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Psalm 96.4, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Psalm 113.3, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Psalm 145.3, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. As with all prayer, praise is a total celebration of who God is, involving the mind, the body, and the heart. So let's talk about praising God with your mind for a moment. How do you praise God with your mind? You use your intellect. Praising with your mind involves reading scripture, viewing nature, and looking at his works and history. We read the Bible for praise in two different ways. First of all, we read it for information through systematic Bible study learning what the scriptures actually say. And then we listen for inspiration, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak in the words of the scripture.
When you're reading the Bible to praise God, remember this. Do not ask, what must I do when you read the scripture, but ask, what is God doing? The focus is all about him, not about us. We also use our mind in praising God when we contemplate nature. God reveals his glory in the natural world. When we appreciate God's workmanship, we are appreciating him. Take time to go out in nature, to look at the world, and to contemplate his wonders. We also praise God when we look at what he does in history. Remember that history really is his story. It is God who is working through, through history. When we study history, look at what God is doing in every age. Studying the lives of saints and Christian heroes can be a way of appreciating the wonder and the power of God. Praise God with our hearts. Emotions are one of the two important ways that we connect our hearts to God. The first is objective revelation, that is through the mind. The word of God observed through the mind. The other one is by subjective impressions, that is the spirit of God felt in our heart. Through the mind, we speak to God and God speaks to us. Through the heart, we also speak to God and God also speaks to us. Our emotions, by thinking that they are unimportant or believing that we really don't need to express them, then this is what happens. When we cut off the flow of feelings, it is harder to express the Holy Spirit and to feel the Holy Spirit in our life. Opening our emotions through praise creates a wider pathway for us to interact with God's Spirit. And we praise God with our hearts through, oh wow, moments of awe and wonder. When we are struck with awe, let's say it and rejoice in it. Through music, through poems or psalms, through any form of creativity. One way of tapping into that heart side of worship and praise is by learning how to create a psalm. Now I have a YouTube video on this and you can go there and you can get some good pointers on it, but let me basically clear, cover it here. Psalms are poems, but they're not poems that rhyme with words. They rhyme ideas. The writer declares one line, creates one line. Then with the second line, he restates, elaborates, or contrasts what he says in the first line. Let me give you some examples. Let's look at Psalm example number one. This is an example of restating the second line, the first line in the second line. First line says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Second line says, and the firmament declares his handiwork. The second line echoes and restates the message of the first line. First line, the Lord is my shepherd. The second line says, I shall not want. In the second line, they restate, but now they add some more meaning. They elaborate on the first line. This is example number three, the first line. The righteous shall prosper, echoed by the second line, but fools shall perish. See, the echoing or the contrast with the second line brings this out. This is just one of many ways that we can praise God with our hearts. Let's talk just a minute about dry spells. Every Christian has dry spells when they just really do not feel the spirit or do not feel particularly joyful. Dry spells come for a lot of reasons. Sometimes they're a test of faith. Sometimes they're an attack of Satan. But more often they come because simply we are emotionally exhausted because of some trial that we are enduring. When they happen, do not ignore them because it can mean that God needs to do something in our heart, that our heart is not where our head is. Choose instead 
to celebrate the heart, to express the attributes of God's emotionally. Make it a choice to celebrate. Let your inner child play when you pray. Praise God with your imagination by setting aside time alone for singing and praising to God. Avoid distractions that pull you away from praise. And make a choice to think about who God is. Praising God with your body. Posture in prayer is important. It's not just incidental. Whether you stretch your hands, bow your heads, fold your arms, keep your eyes open, stand, kneel, or sit, makes a difference. So do it intentionally. How are you celebrating God with your body? We celebrate God bodily by... Singing, and that doesn't just mean listening to music, but actually singing ourselves. Playing a musical instrument, if you have that gift. Play to the glory of God. Creating art, poetry, drawing, sculpture, anything. Dance. And moving prayers. Don't be shy before God. If you don't have to be good, you don't have to be good. You only have to be happy. What you do in the privacy of your prayer closet is between you and God. In your quiet time this week, ask for nothing. Confess nothing. Simply praise God for who he is. Use your mind, emotions, and bodies to praise God. Okay, so let's review where we are on our steps. First, we talked about meditation, which is the art of slowing down. We talked about praise, which is seeing God for who he is. And next, we'll talk about thanksgiving, which is celebrating what he has done. Our next step is thanksgiving, being grateful for what God has done. 